Good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Andrew here on Tuesday, September 29th. So we are just about at the end of September here. So I guess you could wake us up now that September is almost over, just like that Green Day song, Wake Me Up When September Ends. Well, I hope you all had a good weekend and are having a good start to your week. Certainly been an interesting weekend as we had power issues on Sunday, which were not related to the PG&E power safety shutoff. And so we, East Quincy was out of power apparently in the morning and then we were out of power in the afternoon pretty much until about 10 o'clock at night and then we were off and on, off and on again. Well today, the power seems to be on cooperating today and was cooperating yesterday, so hopefully no more power outages. But we do want to continue to pray for those that are dealing with the fire as the fire is moving down moved down a little further from the Feather River Canyon with some new evacuations from Tobin as well as, I think, yeah, Tobin, Story, Concow, Yankee Hill, down more toward Lake Oroville where the North Fork comes into Lake Oroville. So once again, Paradise even was under evacuation warning as of Mon Monday, I think. So yeah, it's like, here we go again. Just it's kind of hard to catch a break. It feels like been hearing the sound of helicopters coming in and out of Gansner Field yesterday and hearing them today. So it's a wonderful sound to hear those helicopters and as they fight the fire from the air. But anyways, today we are reflecting a little bit on our new series that's coming up called Pressing On. And so I wanted to share our scripture that we're going to be reading this weekend. And maybe if you'd like to contribute in the comments that do a little build a sermon here as a colleague of mine likes used to do before retiring and so just kind of a way to input and hear stories and we're kind of talking about looking forward is what we're looking at and pressing on so last month we went through the wilderness we were focusing a lot on the book of exodus and israel's journey through the wilderness as they were led by moses out of egypt and having to learn to trust god and now we're Actually, now fast forward all the way into the epistles. And so we're going to read from Paul's letter to the Philippians. So if you have your Bible app or the Bible at home, I invite you to turn to Philippians 3, and we're going to read from 4b up until verse 16. Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has, done, has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind, and if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the understanding of this word. Well, so our theme this Sunday, or this weekend, will be that I may gain Christ. And so what do you have, what have you given up in order to attain Christ? You know, do you have an attitude or a mindset that you've given up to obtain Christ? or gain Christ, kind of like what, where do you have like a role in life? So like Paul is talking about here in 4b through 6, 
you know, he's talking about you know his previous life. He was a Pharisee. He was a zealot, persecutor of the church until his Damascus Road experience in the book of Acts. And he now calls these rubbish, or in some translations, excrement of his past. You know, we all have different parts of our past that we cling to. I mean, I know that I've got my own things in the past, beliefs that I used to have that I wouldn't believe today, and that I can't even bring myself to believe today. And that's because I've, I'm still trying to gain Christ, though. It's part of that journey toward, in the Wesleyan tradition of justification and working towards sanctification, or as one of our questions for ordination that we answered, going on to perfection in love, or more like wholeness in love. And that's how I'm trying to gain Christ in my walk. And so how are you gaining Christ in your walk of faith? You know, what things in your past are rubbish that you regard now in order that you may gain Christ? And see, Paul is ultimately wanting to die and rise with Christ. And that's what I hope for, too, because I know that this goal of life, you know, we may never see the end, just like Moses only got to glimpse the promised land, but didn't get to enter into it. You know, Jesus never really got to see the kingdom of God fully in vision that he had as he died, and he rose, and then he ascended to heaven. And see, that's why you're, it's up to us today to do all that. It's up to us to keep running this race, as Paul mentions. You know, it's... Just as important as the goal, too, though. That's one of the things that I've also learned, too, is that the... Oh, sorry, my cell phone's going off. Forgot to mute it. But it seems appropriate, though, that I have autumn leaves as my ringtone. But anyways, yeah. So, the, But also remember that the race is just as important as the goal, too, though. It's just as much a part of the journey there. And, you know, let us try to you know, hold fast to what we have attained, even as we seek Christ in everything that we do, try to be like Christ, and to be the hands and feet of Christ in everything that we do. So that's our word for today. So if you have any insights you wish to share about, you know, gaining Christ or, you know, what previous things you've had to shed in order to gain Christ, I'd love to talk more. But let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for the aircraft that are flying to fight the fires and all of the fire crews that are working to keep us safe. We thank you for the beautiful fall color that's starting to appear around us, even though it still feels like August with the hot weather. We pray, Lord, for each other. We pray, Lord, for our churches. and We want to pray, Lord, for our relaunch task force as we roll up our sleeves along with our church council and all of the leaders of our local church here as we hopefully prepare to relaunch our in-person services. We pray, Lord, for all of those affected by COVID-19. We pray, Lord, especially for all of those places in our state affected by fire, especially Napa and Sonoma right now and up near Redding. So, Lord, we ask for your safety. We ask for your grace. We ask for your presence to always go with us. And, Lord, we continue to seek ways that we can Shed the old way so that we can gain Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me. And we'll be back tomorrow about 2 o'clock then. So I look forward to seeing you and engaging with you then. Also, you might want a copy of The Upper Room for tomorrow in Thursday's Daily Word as well. So if you don't have a copy, the you're welcome to come by our church office on the front door. There's a bunch of them in that manila envelope there on the door. So... I look forward to seeing you then. Peace and blessings.